My Gavan and Melanine, and well met indeed. I'm Eric here, Gala Durathan, the head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer, and welcome back to Divide and Conquer as we continue on as the Breeland and the Shire. In what is uh, rapidly becoming one of my favourite campaigns, because it really is bloody good fun. So, to recap from last time, we have taken Grep's Crossing, or Tharbad, and we are holding on the eastern side. Uh, Dunland keep coming at us, but they won't break through. And Dunland and Ennard Wife have gone to war, but we are allied with Ennard Wife. So, we've got support. In the north, Angmar keep appearing, but the northern Dunedain are holding them back. However, they are once again being besieged up there, and we can't actually see the army that's doing it. So, that'll be an interesting one. Uh, but other than that, it's uh, fairly routine. Also, the music just stopped for some reason, but there we are. Oh, and it returns. And it returns. So we've got Dunland on our southern border, and we don't have any threats from Angmar just yet. Beyond Dunland, though, looking beyond that, our current enemies are Angmar and Dunland. But Dunland are, of course, allied to the realm of Imladris and the dominion of Isengard. Now, Imladris are allied to the northern Dunedain, Linden, and, of course, Dunlendings. But the Northern Dunedain are yet to be at war with the Dunlendings. And there's a strong possibility that Dunland could bring Imladris and the ND in against us. So we've got to be a little bit on the lookout for this treachery that may well be afoot. Let's train a couple of those and get them in forts. Otherwise it's all pretty good. I've We've yet to upgrade a town to show you what the Bree unique... Um, settlements look like. We've yet to attack Fornost and Anuminas, and as somebody said, if it gets to the point, like if we get to the end of the campaign and realise we're never going to fight there, then in the in some episodes, an episode at some time, I will attack these two locations just to show you what they look like. But other than that, we're doing all right. We are creeping ever closer to the time when we must decide how the Breelanders will fight this war. Do we unite with the Dunedain or do we stand alone? Hopefully unite with them. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to go for the mercenary path, if you are wondering. But I think we're at an end turn, so I will happily adhere to that. We've got a gentleman yes. heading to Isengard, actually. Yes. So let's go and do that. Isengard reached. Is that currently a mission of ours? Yes. You bring a proposition for my king. Your plans oh, he's accepted you trade rest. What do you think you feel about map info? Then? And they've accepted map info. Your time was most and we've just got 500 gold coins. Your orders. Now I head to Rohan. As you wish. Stopping oh, here. The Hornberg is a dwarven settlement. <laughs> looks cool though, doesn't it? Good work by the elite dwarf. Look how cool that dwarven system looks. Obviously it's not dwarven, it's just a little bit of a glitch. Men most of you should by now know what it is. Should know about the um unbeatable bug. Unbeatable bug. Um, a question I've been asked to pose to you all by Orc Lover is the following. The garrison script is now in your hands. You can build the garrison building and this will dictate whether or not you get a garrison. If you don't build the building, you won't get anything. If you do build the building, you will get something. Uh, I think our turn times have slowed down as well, unfortunately. They've gone away from the fast turns and into the realms of slow turns. So the garrison script is a choice. Build the building, get the script. Don't build the building, don't get the garrison. Now the building at the moment will have harder, um, when it actually comes to it, it will have more requirements. It won't just be built straight away, costing about a thousand, taking three turns. Uh, it will take longer. And it, there'll be requirements, most likely building yes, requirements, that locking it out. Yes. However, um, the AI cannot anticipate that you will have the garrison units, so they will never attack with an army designed to take down your garrison troops, because of course they can't see them, so they won't anticipate that they will be there. However, it does only add one unit at the first level and two units at the second level. How long have we got on that? Nine turns. I might as well turn turn again. So, it isn't as though... It adds 20 units out of nowhere that the AI suddenly has to deal with. It does only add one and then two. But there's a suggestion that instead of a garrison troop spawn when you attack a city, instead 
there's a suggestion that we should make the garrison building give two free upkeep slots and unlock a unlock the garrison unit as a trainable unit that you then recruit but it has such a high upkeep that to keep it on the field is just so stupid it'd be an insane upkeep like four times that of your militia or something like that so you you train it just to keep it in the city and it would then be the garrison troops so the ai would be able to handle it that is the alternative to having just ran just having units spawn out of nowhere however the major problem with that is that the ai will never do it and by that what i mean is the ai will not keep that unit in the garrison because the ai does not particularly factor garrisons into its thinking it always tries to fight battles out on the field and it often ignores garrisons sometimes indeed it even moves troops out of a garrison just so that it can attack you in the field so if it were to go that way i immediately well to be honest this is all a bit moot i'm not going to change the garrison script but it is worth seeing what you all think um but as I say, I, I'm not going to change it because, purely because of what I've already said. The AI just will not cope if you take away the garrison spawn. They won't keep troops in their cities and they will lose their cities. The main reason why the garrison script was added was because the AI could not defend its key regions. So places like Minas Tirith were falling like immediately and it took something away from the campaign. So the garrison script was included to resolve that problem. Uh, and so, uh, so it shall remain. But there's some people, some of our better testers, dislike the fact of it. However, I've been tearing my hair out, and I hope that's come across in the comments. Because with this new garrison script system, if you don't want the garrison, if you think that it's too cheesy, you think it makes the game too simple, or you don't like the fact that the AI can't really plan ahead for the garrison troops, then don't build the garrison building. It is that simple. I'm like, that's literally been my response every single time someone has raised one of these questions, and I'm just flabbergasted. Like, that's the whole point of the new system. If you don't want the troops, don't build the building. Don't moan about how cheesy it is. Just don't build it. It's like, that's the whole point. So actually, to be honest, I'm not interested in this case in your views on, on what the system is like because I'm not going to change it because you can just not build it if you do think it's going to be too cheesy. So that was a few seconds of absolutely nothing, to be honest. Uh, but what I'm now going to do is line up pretty much all of my troops that are melee, save for the pikes and the ones we've already got over there, the defenders. And the rest is going to come across that bridge there. We are called to war. They're all coming around through the door. Yeah, they are. Pause it. Get you guys in there as well. Bandits sort of flank even more around. Take the other bandits with you. And the lumbermen. Everybody move. This is our time. This is our fight. They may well have to fight. If the enemy tries to push through again, they may well have to fight. Abby, you'll be very pleased to hear that Racer has made leaps and bounds with the canned script and it is now in a serviceable position. Um, there's an awful lot still to do about it. If the beta testers are, are listening, like we don't do absolutely everything required. And then say, like, oh, this is now done, test it. We do it in stages, because modding takes so bloody long. So everything's done in stages. Yeah, and the only reason I say that is because we do get quite a few reports of people saying, oh, this isn't in yet. And it's like, I know it's not in yet. I've not done it. I've not told you it's in yet. <laughs> I don't need that reported back. I apologise, though. That sounds a bit petulant. But, um, so... The, the script is almost there, but loads of work about it is still to be done. But the scripting is done. So Canned is getting closer, which means the faction overview for Canned will soon be a pass. But returning to our own fight then, these aren't actually bridges 
That is why I can not only line troops up on them, but also why the AI does that push through thing. Because uh, they are technically just bits of land. And as last time, they are just coming straight through. So. In we go. Although this side, I want them to kind of come in a bit more before you uh, actually hit them. Brigands! Brigands! I haven't edited these in this version, have I? No. They're still as weak as they've always been. Brela militia hitting in from the side. Where are the 45 of them? You guys get in as well. Lumbermen, you guys go in. In you come from the back. What are you doing? Go, 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 go. The defenders are holding them. Why aren't you moving? There we are, we've hit them. Our defended, defenders are really defending well. Our archers are no longer attacking there because they have nothing to attack. But the enemy is getting slaughtered in that gap. Another successful victory for the men of Breland. Although, with us pushing in from behind as well, we're only helping them the mass out, to be honest. We're just pushing in with their troops as well. The enemy are badly bloodied. I tell you what. They have lost half their men. Get all of them in as well. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Just encircle, trap, and kill them all. Get our bodyguard involved. I believe that's all of them. 97%. I'm surprised they haven't run. The enemy's general. Behold, and it's over. 1971052. This is a great victory worthy of only the mightiest of generals. Farmhand Pikeman taking the top slot. Would you believe it? Farmhand bloody Pikeman. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, you'll be very pleased to hear that my PUBG career goes well. I have positive KDs in all three game modes. I've won one duo. I've won one solo. And I've placed top 10 in the squad twice. In the duo three times. And on my own now, I think five times. So I'm doing alright, actually. Doing alright. Just to remind you all that's happening. Also, I'm absolutely loving my foray back into Warhammer 40,000. And I've just finished book three of the Horus Heresy. And I'm eager to see where it goes from here. But returning to Lord of the Rings. Your order, Our successes Lord. go well. Oh, and Bregost is available to us. And then this army will possibly... We might be allowed to cross at Suduri, actually. Do we have um, movement rights with Ennard Wyeth? I don't know if we do. Ah, oh, you can get Greenway. Yes, please. Can you have only three units of free upkeep? Two units from that. One unit from that. Yeah. I'll take a port from you. Ah, the tax rates I've, I've fixed again, by the way. So low tax now will actually give a boost over normal tax rate. So that's all been resolved. Um, I'll tell you what. Sheriffs and lumbermen head back to Royal. You three head to Crossing. And then I think what we will do is we'll wait. And um, once Ed has taken down Bregos, he can sweep across. Because that army's really good. We've got units of Dunedain. We've got two, three units of Dunedain. We've got Greenway men at arms. There's some dwarves in there. There's mercenary mil merchant militia. One of my, I really like that unit because it's absolutely abysmal. The unit is awful. Poor morale. Poor morale response. They don't even have good stamina. Their attacks only four. Their charges only three. But they have 15 total defense because they're one of the most visually heavy armored units in the game. And so I wanted to reflect that they are basically. They've bought gear that they think is going to protect them, even though they just they can't like use it for love nor money. And so that's reflected in their um, high defensive stat, but poor everything else. And I, I like that angle. I like that aspect of them. 
Uh, someone in the comments did say I should send Ed north because we're going to have to deal with Angmar sooner or later. But I don't think we will have to deal with Angmar just yet. What we can quite easily do though, given that bribery is no longer a thing, is if you hold down the Alt key and click to a location, which will be this point here. Same for you, same for you, same for Deep Hollow. Sackville. Then all of those places will now train their troops to walk to that point. So if we've got quite a bit of money and hobbits are quite cheap. Upkeep wise, 180, 215, 120, 105. Very cheap. So let's build a little army of hobbits. Oh, you can get Dunedain. Well, we'll have a, an army of hobbits and uh, one unit at a time. Oh my god, Sackville. Oh my god. Uh, can we get the tax rate here? Is that like, very high and they'll still like us? Yes. There is an upper limit. So a population of a village will never go above a certain number. I don't know what that number is because I can't remember. But there's a, there's a point where it will reach... It will reach a point whereupon it will then never get any larger. So the squalor will be affected, but at least you don't have to deal with squalor forever to a point where your population is so high and the detriment of the fact that they're all still living in a village is so big that you basically, even with a full garrison, the village is going to rebel. That never happens. The village population will cap out at Whoa, a point. And once it caps at that point, it will never grow anymore. So your squalor will then be will then stay at whatever level that is. Because of course, once a town gets to a point where it can upgrade, if you don't upgrade it, you then get huge squalor penalties. So you obviously trying to deal with those squalor penalties is a major factor, a major aspect of the management. And normally the easiest way to get rid of it is just to upgrade the city. So when you cannot upgrade the city, this becomes more of a problem. And um, in this instance, it does cap, so even though the villages are restricted, you're never going to have outrageous squalor conditions. Or problems, I should say. Which is also what we could do at the highest tier of, say, castle and city. Because I'm told that there's, the populations of those is getting a bit large. Um, it's getting too... it's getting unmanageable. Too big to be managed. And that may well be the case. Oh, Argon is going to have his roads up in two turns. I don't want that. I just don't think I can use it. No, I cannot. Uh, but you might as well get military. I certainly think we've got the money for it. Although we should keep focusing on trade while we economy while we can, where we can. Just so that when... Um, I've done everything in these, haven't I? Isn't it only Michael Delving that has construction left? Yeah. Sheep farming go on then. Traveller's Rest. I don't really need a Traveller's Rest. <laughs> Built it and then immediately turned it away. Oh, there's Chief Narago on the Chivalrous. I'm training a general here. Take the Greenway with you. To go and be the you, the commander of the army over here. That's a bloody shame that uh, Sackville can train one at a time. Because it gets three, it gets all four units, all Hobbit units, and Dunedain. I'd like the Hobbit army to be led by Hobbits, but... Um, I don't. The hobbits, if they stay in the towns, they become. They keep the money here really high. I mean, look at that. Those five, those four villages and one town, are making an obscene amount of money. Two thousand five hundred, three thousand four fifty. Uh, no, sorry, two thousand five hundred, three five hundred, five thousand, near just shy of six thousand. Probably six thousand with all the minor numbers as well. From four villages and a town, six thousand. That's crazy. We're very wealthy. Oh, and that's the other thing I've not shown you, is Bree actually starts with great roads built already, which is something the Bree landers can then not build. Um, unless possibly when you side with the Dunedain you can. And the gar that's fixed in later versions as well, that Garrison Hall bug there, which I've said before, so I shouldn't say it again. But uh, the highest tier of road, great roads, which is now available to kind of Numenorean descendants, I think if Bree side with the Dunedain you do get that. But don't quote me on that because I can't remember. You can retrain. Ed. Oh, how? What? I was one turn away and they didn't... Oh, they must have moved back in their turn. Your orders, my lord. The question is, am I going to be able to cross there? No, I'm not. 
Not without Captain Malfin moving. Which he won't. So, we're heading to Dunland. Yes. We shall continue tomorrow. But Argon's building, so in two turns, you'll be able to get through that province quicker. Why is there not a road along there like that? Why? Why does it go up, along, and down? It's madness. I should follow the coast. There's all of our Hobbit units moving into position. Um, I should say that I, at the moment, <laughs> whilst playing this game, I'm absolutely covered in paint. I've been spent the afternoon painting a shop. Uh, a charity in 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 Luton actually and um, they've got a shop now and we volunteered to help paint it and I'm now I'm literally head to toe covered in paint curious sensation uh, there we are there we are Fosco I'm sure you tried to adopt a moment ago. ah yes please getting sure skills are all over the place Quiver, yep next building learn the lead What's good here? Mm, smoking house gone then. grep has got a town guard. I'll take a leather town. Oh no, because you'll be cheaper once the Mason's Hall's built. So we'll worry about that on the next turn. Can you even retrain there? No, not properly. Um, My Lord. I tell you what, Sackville's going to take so long to train its unit that why don't those watch sheriffs head north and get retrained? And then we've got an elite army. As you wish. So return to Hobbiton where you can be retrained. You eight guys, can you train? No. Just Bree train them? Yes. You guys return to Bree. Or you'll be retrained. And now I'll take you back across and take you across to there. Do with more upkeep. Why is why have we only got oh we've got we've only got two and two is already taken up yeah we need that one for three and then one more above it for four. Fourteen turns only fourteen turns until the next available unit. Your general will be with you in a moment. One turn away. Ah, oh, and they can be retrained now. End the turn. Merging armies, my lord. So Ed makes his way across. The Dunlendings will fall very quickly, I think, once Ed crosses the river. He's got a formidable army. The Dunlendings have been beaten and haggard. But then the Dunlendings might actually be beating an Edwife, because Isengard is with them. That's the problem, actually. We haven't got... No, we have got quite updated information, haven't we? So the Enidwythian capital is still held by them. Dunland have taken Barad Vin or whatever it's called. Is it Barad Vin? I try, the, the castle south of the Guathlo River. Oh yeah, the turns have definitely slowed down. They're taking ages. Always a bloody way, isn't it? Oh dear. I misclicked. Fortunately he didn't get ambushed. As you wish, orders. By your my lord. Was that your best shot? He didn't feel like he had it in him. Your orders, my lord. And our roads are built, yes, my lord. speeding up our time With slightly, honor. not massively. Enidwyth trying to... It is Baradvin. Enidwyth taking it back. I really just want to cross into Dunland to show you the new battle maps, because I think they look awesome. Um, yeah, while well, you've got the money, get a Master Masons, make it all cheaper again, because you're one of our biggest cities. In fact, I think you are our biggest city. You're even bigger than Bree, yeah. Did you get two free upkeep here? Oh, you will do. Unit of them, then, please. Orders. Continue to assign locations. Wish, my lord. Yes. And there's our General lord, Cliff. General Cliff. Will Take the Woodland Hunters with you. They've just retrained. Go and sit in that fort. That should give us a bit more money. Angmar still sort of... Ooh, Overlord Agendower on his own. See, this is what I mean. The, not what I mean. This mean, I mean nothing to you. But one of the biggest reasons why people said that the garrison script shouldn't be the way it is currently is because the AI, because it doesn't understand that there's going to be an extra unit, it attacks you in dribs and drabs. It attacks you with what it thinks is big enough to beat the town, with what it can see, and then obviously it loses because you gain an extra unit and it dies. However, I would argue that the AI does the dribs and drabs attacks regardless. 
of whether or not you're going to get some extra gifted unit that it can't see. I think it is still going to attack slowly and pathetically because that unfortunately is just how the AI is thinking. I've seen numerous comments on Total War Center of people asking if we can find a way to make the AI combine its armies better. And unfortunately, the sad fact of the matter is that we can't. We just can't. The AI will always do that stupid thing where it sends lots of little armies rather than grouping them into one big army. And I don't know how to make them see that that's folly. I don't know what the solution here is. So, that's yes, something that's just going to stay, I'm afraid. With honour, we can go no further, my lord. Oh, Chieftain Fosca is their faction heir. Um, you might as well get a blacksmith to get the money for it. Slightly different buildings. Traveller's Rest a bit more of an inn. The inn is a bit more of... Those doors are very disproportionately sized. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. Ah, what are we doing? We built a building So, Oh no, that was that one, wasn't it? Once you've built that one, I'm not sure we'll have enough for the last one. But we've got a lot of money. We really have. We're making excellent money. As our Hobbit army assembles with some Dunedain leading them. The first full army of the Shire. Shire Battalion 1, we shall call them. <laughs> or... I don't know, 1st Battalion Shire Regiment. <laughs> no, that's that's far too realistic. What would they name themselves? Your orders, my lord. I don't yes, know. My lord. We can go no Something further, vain, I imagine. I'm the Shire's finest. All right, once Ed crosses the river, orders, we'll take Grep, who is still alive. And we will push south with two armies, two armies of overwhelming power, and we will watch as the Dunlendings fall before us. However, that's very likely to be in the next episode. Next to the next to the next to the episode there. I am really thoroughly enjoying both of the current campaigns. Rune, I'm really in. I like that campaign. I'm looking forward to getting our golden elites. And Bree is just so much fun. It is so much fun. But I am planning a reforged game soon. Now what I'm going to do is not record it live because it puts way too much pressure on time, on timings of when it's recorded, of, like, of ensuring that the video, everything goes smoothly. Whereas if you do it from a replay, you can get it all, you can work all the kinks out. So it will not be live, but it will be a reforged video, which I do plan to do got my people assembled but this weekend there's a very strong possibility that it will be a warhammer 40,000 dawn of war soulstorm titanium wars mod video because we've been playing it a lot and i'm really into it at the moment uh, also to brassadas and brassadas alone i am probably never going to feature an age of empires video that does not have me in it because we're not a predominantly Age of Empires heavy channel. And I don't think, well, all of you listening can part, can join in, but I don't think you'd all be that interested to see me talk about people you don't know playing Age of Empires. Because I'm not a, I'm not like a commentary channel. I'm a me playing the game kind of channel. And I think that it would... Yes, my lord. I don't think people would really be all that interested if it was four randomers or eight randomers or however many randomers it was playing. So I would welcome your feedback on that because I've been sent a couple of Age of Empires games that have been recorded in our Discord group, The Order of the Swan. So they've been recorded by people I know and I've watched the games, they're entertaining. Well, I haven't watched the one that Brassas has recently sent me, but I've watched them in the past and they're all very entertaining. But of course, I'm not in them. And I'd be interested to see what you all, if you all think that that would still be something you'd want to see or whether or not a key feature would be that I would need to be in them. You've probably got a higher upkeep even though, but still, this is such a cheap army. Such a cheap army. It's basically already built and we're not losing any money. <laughs> uh, so do let me know about that because then I can do a bank of Age of Empires videos, but as I say, I just wouldn't be in them. I haven't played Age of Empires for some time, much to the uh, disappointment of the Age of Empires following in the order. But I'm a, I'm a bin, I'm a sort of a, I'm a game floater. 
I will play a game for a few months almost religiously, then I'll move on to the next one and play that, and then the next one and play that. Whereas some people will play one game continuously almost forever. And I've just never been one of those. I've never been like that. Which is, I suppose, why MMOs, I'm so flitty with MMOs, because they require a massive amount of dedication, and a dedication that I can't really give them. So, I haven't even got a mason tool in Royal Farback. But Grep's Crossing's held. Now, we'll never be able to upgrade these because we are Bree, so they will be ruins forever. But that's natural, of course. Why would Bree know how to repair and maintain Numenorean architecture when our main capital city is made out of wood? It's just not something we'd be down with. But anyway, I think I'm going to end it there. In my mind, it's been a bit of an eh episode. I was hoping for some more battles, but none came. And I'm disappointed that the turns seem slower. But then, they may not actually be that slow. It could be a consequence of the new script, the new garrison script. I don't know. Either way, that will conclude today. And I've thoroughly enjoyed it. No matter how eh I thought it was, I've had, a, I've had fun. It's been an enjoyable afternoon. So, until we speak again, dear friends, Navar Naden Peramad Melonin, and farewell.